Hello, I am Reverend Irene Smith, and I'd like to welcome you to Generationally Speaking. Here at the table, we come and we discuss life issues, no matter what they might be. As we sit at the table with each generation, we all learn, we all grow, we all are inspired. Yeah, yeah. Generationally speaking. Now we move on to Maudie, uh, Maudie Thursday. And Maudie Thursday, we know we celebrate foot washing. Wow, foot washing. And so now Jesus has gathered all his disciples together. And you can find, you, you'll find the, the, the narrative of Maudie Thursday in John 13. You may not find that narrative in all the other gospels because each one of them, each one of the gospels gives us uh, the same scenario, but bits and pieces, okay? And so here uh, in, 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 in chapter 13 of John, we see where Jesus, um, it says here, it was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew the hour had come for him to leave the world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simeon, Issachariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. That is where we get a mighty Thursday from, okay? It comes right here out of scripture. This was on a Thursday and the word mighty means command. What was Jesus commanding them to do? Jesus was commanding the disciples to love each other just as he had loved them, just as he loved them. So <clears throat> Peter, of course, you know, says, you know, uh, here in verse seven, uh, I'll start in verse six. He said, he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no parts with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. So Jesus already knew that um, Judas was there. He knew Judas was present and he knew what Judas had to do. But Jesus lowered himself and he showed himself to be a servant. He knew he was sent to serve and that's who we all are. We are servants. And, and he didn't, uh, Jesus lowered himself to the lowest level that he could. And that was the washing of their feet. And I know still churches today on Maudie Thursday, they still observe what they call foot washing. And that's where this came from. Then we move on over and into scripture. And we, we hear about when uh, Peter's denial uh, here in uh, John uh, chapter 13 verse 31. And he says, when he was gone, Jesus said, now the son of man is glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the son of himself and glorify him at once. My children, I will, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you. Here comes this new command when we've talked about um, Monday, uh, Madi, 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 uh, Thursday. This is the command. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciple if you love one another. 
that command is still in place today, that we have to love one another. We have to love even the ones who don't love us back. We have to love the ones who mistreat us and lie on us. We have to love them with a godly love. Amen. And then Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus replied, where I am going, you cannot follow me, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you? Now, I will lay down my life for you. Peter really meant that. He just wasn't uh, spouting off words. Peter really meant that from the very essence of his soul. But then Jesus answers because Jesus knows us. Jesus knows our frailties. He knows our shortcomings. And he said to him, will you really lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. So here it has this rooster, but in scripture it says that it's a trumpet call that occurs. And that trumpet call uh, was known as the cock crow, uh, signal, signal the end. So here is, uh, and, and this is what I'm, I'm, I'm going with. And so now uh, this is the NIV version. So now we, we, we go on to Good Friday. And Lord knows, when we think about the word good, our connotation is that good is something uh, that is sweet. When we think about good, we think that of something that is beneficial to us. When we think about good, we don't associate pain with good. But Good Friday for us was death for Jesus. Good Friday for us was, was, was what we needed but Good Friday for Jesus was when he took on the sins of the world. Good Friday for us was a lifting. But Good Friday for Jesus was a, was a, a, a going down, a, 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 a darkness. Good Friday for us illuminated and woke us and reminded us that, that God so loved the John 3.16, that God so loved the world that he gave. But Good Friday for Jesus, hallelujah. Man, he took my sins and your sins. I, I, I know, I know. No, you didn't ask him. That's the, you, didn't, you didn't have to ask him. He did it for, for, for you and I even before we were a seed or a thought. Even before our parent was a seed or a thought. He knew that down the generation we were going to need him. And so we needed his blood to cover us. As we go back into the Old Testament, and we look at the sin offerings and how they had to kill bulls and, and how they had to kill uh, uh, all kinds of uh, birds and, 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 and sheep to offer a sacrifice. And after a while, Jesus, God said, listen, your sacrifice is a stench in my nose. It's a stench because you have not changed. You come and you offer these sacrifices, but your heart has not changed. You're not trying to live for me. And so now God turns and God looks for the perfect lamb. And, and Jesus says he would come and, and, and become carnate. And so he, he came in, in incarnation and he came as, 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 as flesh and blood and he walked these mundane shores and he was born to die. He came to, lay, to take the sins of the world. And so on Good Friday, we see Jesus being taken from one, uh, one hall to another hall, one trial to another trial, from, from Pontius Pilate to Herod the Tetriarch. We see Jesus uh, and not opening his mouth, but, but allowing them to say things, allowing them to beat him. Because it says, by his stripes, and they beat him. By his stripes, we are healed and made whole. And, and so on the cross, we have Good Friday. And um, Church-wide church now, we have these Good Friday services where we have the seven uh, sayings from the cross. So this is where all of this comes from. Now, in order to get the seven sayings, you will not find them in one uh, gospel. You have to look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to get all the, the seven sayings from the cross. And so Jesus on the cross, he 
uh, these seven sayings are, are called forgiveness number one, salvation number two, relationship number three, abandonment number four, distress number five, triumph number six, and reunion, reunion number seven. And so this forgiveness we see in uh, the first word from the cross, the first saying from the cross. And this is Good Friday. This is why we celebrate Good Friday, because Jesus died on the cross. He was dying and he was dying for these seven things, for forgiveness of our sins, for salvation to bring us back into a right relationship, for that relationship, for abandonment that we no longer are are are. Are, are discarded, but we are become heirs and joint heirs with Jesus for our distress, for triumph and reunion. Here in, in the first thing found in Luke 23, 34, Jesus says, Father, mm, forgive them for they know not what they do. They have beat him. They have uh, hurled insults at him. They have gone from um, the Sunday before uh, when they were worshiping him um, to this to this day where they are saying crucify him, crucify him. And and they Herod, uh, they, they did their best to try to free Jesus. They said, listen, we, we have this this person, these other two people, we, we are these other persons. We can free Jesus if you want. And, and, and we'll take uh, uh, and we'll let another person die. And they said, no, 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 no. And so Jesus says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That is a powerful statement. And I, I think we see that again uh, when we see uh, Stephen being uh, uh, martyred. When Stephen looks up to heaven and says, forgive them for they know not what they do. Here it is, though. Jesus first said this. And, and so this is the first word, uh, first saying from the cross. And the second saying from the cross is, is, verily I say unto thee, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Well, this is uh, Luke 23, 43. We know this is salvation. How can it be salvation, you say, Reverend Smith? Well, as he was dying on the cross, there was a thief on, on, on his left and a thief on his right. And, and the, the, the thief on his right said, he said, this man has no reason to be dying. This man has no reason to be on this cross. And he looked at Jesus and he said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus spoke back to him and said, verily I say unto thee, to, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Woo. <coughs> so he is now... The thief is dying on the cross, but Jesus has given him salvation before we even knew salvation. Jesus has given him salvation. And guess what? There was no baptism. There was no opportunity for him to walk down the aisle and give the deacon his hand and God his heart on the cross. Whew. I get excited when I think about the goodness of Jesus on the cross. Jesus offered salvation first to this thief. Which means, my God, my God, my God, salvation is possible for all of us. Let me get some water off of that one. <clears throat> and the next thing was, woman, behold thy son and behold thy mother. Now we're looking at relationships. Jesus looks down and he sees his mother. And he sees the disciple who calls himself the, the beloved of Jesus, John. And Jesus has mercy upon his mother. And this is found in John 19 verses 26 to 27. And so Jesus creates this relationship that's not biological, but he creates this relationship and he creates this relationship. And he says, woman, he didn't say mother. He didn't say mom, but he said woman because that's who she was, a woman. A woman that, that he understood uh, because he, he understands that the relationship they had is no longer. That, that woman, he says, behold thy son. Not look at me as your son, but look at this man, John, who is your son. And, and he says to John, behold thy mother. This relationship means that John would be responsible for taking care of Mary. 
<coughs> John would be responsible for watching over her. Look at Jesus, even dying. He made sure relationships are intact. <coughs> and then that fourth word, come, you can find that in Matthew 27 and 46 and Mark 15 and 34. My God, my God, whoo, why has thou forsaken me? Here we deal with abandonment. And there are times in our life that we feel as though God has abandoned us. There are times in our life we feel as if God doesn't hear us anymore. There are times in our life we want the Lord. Do you hear my prayer? Can I tell you that Jesus from the cross, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? God had not forsaken him, but he knew the price that he had to pay, that he was giving his all. And he, he was offering his all, but he was never abandoned. We might be in distress, but let's, let, we are not, we are not, uh, uh, not cast, cast out. Never, never. And so he shows us this in this saying. And then the next, uh, that uh, fifth saying is I thirst. And that's found in John 19 and 28. And here we, we understand the distress that we all can experience in life. Jesus, he says, I thirst. Was he thirsting for a natural, for a, 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 a water that comes from a spring? Or was he thirsting for something a little more significant? I say that he was not thirsting for water, but he was thirsting for that, 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 was, that is more spiritual. And so he says, I thirst. And then in uh, the, the sixth saying from the cross is this is this is the saying of triumph. Ooh, ooh. And it says it is finished. Everything that God had called him to do. Is now complete. Can I tell you this? Live your life and give and do all that God has called you to do so that when you take your last breath. You can say that, that someone can say and you will know that you died empty because you you poured out all that God had put in, inside of you to do. Amen. Amen. You 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 followed through. Uh, and, and so Jesus says it is finished. There's nothing more to do. There's nothing more for you and I to do. Everything for our salvation has been completed. Jesus took it all. And he said, it is finished. And then we have the, the reunion between him, God, the father and Jesus Christ, the son. He says, father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. And that's found in uh, Luke 23 and 46. And so Jesus dies. And uh, when he dies on that on that cross, my God, my God, my God. He dies on that cross and the work that had to be done was now finished, was now complete. It was done. It was finished. The work was completed. And now, now Jesus, now they, they uh, take his body off the cross. Matthias and, and they take him and they put him in a borrowed tomb. <laughs> Don't you love that? J Jesus knew it all. They put him in a bar tomb. He wouldn't need it because he's he not going to be there long. And so they put him in this bar tomb. And, and, and as they put him in this bar tomb and he, he goes down and, and the scripture uh, says he, he goes down and, and, and he snatches the, the keys of death, hell and the grave. And, and uh, he, on the third day. And, and, you know, when you read, when you hear preachers, I, I love preachers. Uh, when preachers tell the story, man, they, they put they put some sugar on it. You know what I'm saying? They they they, they put some ingredients on it. They, they put some yeast on it. When preachers tell the story of, of Jesus in the grave and, and how the devil thought he had him and how the devil was having a celebration. We got him. We got him. But 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 suddenly they the preachers would say, but there was a sound heard, uh, one that was not expected. And, and he. Here was Jesus was, was breaking through. <coughs> but <coughs> scripture says that God raised him from the dead. And when he raised him from the dead, he raised him with all power. And we know that when Jesus was buried, they didn't have an opportunity 
to prepare his body as it was customary to do. So the women got together and on that uh, Sunday morning, they, they made their way to the grave uh, to, to prepare the body. But when they got there, the boulder, the stone that had been put in place had been rolled away. And when the women went in, they saw that Jesus was not there. They didn't know what had happened. They thought maybe his, maybe perhaps uh, his body had been stolen. They didn't know. But then the, the angel of the Lord appeared to them and gave them a word of hope, gave them a word of encouragement that he was no longer amongst the dead and go and tell the disciples. And they went and told the disciples and the disciples came and saw that Jesus was no longer there. And so when we look at the resurrection story, we see uh, the disciples going and going, uh, finding their, their way to, to that place. And then we see the disciples uh, out fishing for they didn't know what to do. And Jesus met them right where they were. Scripture says that Peter, when he saw Jesus on the shore, jumped off the boat, took off his clothes and jumped off the boat and swam to him. Jesus presented himself to his disciples and to others, and they, he was flesh. He was flesh. So they, they would know that he was not a spirit, that he, that he was flesh. And he, they, scripture said he sat down and he ate with them so that they would understand. And then he spoke with them. He, he continued to teach them. He continued to confront them. And, and doubting Thomas who said, I don't believe until I, I touch the nail scarred hands. And so when Jesus meets Thomas, he says, you want to touch my hand? And, and, and Jesus told the disciples, you know, they believed because they saw. But others would be blessed mightily because they believe and they've not seen. Here we are. So when it comes down to the celebration of Easter or resurrection, as you might call it, whatever you do, Remember the reason why we celebrate Easter Sunday, that it is such a holy day. It is a day that we celebrate and we uh, continually to commem commemorate uh, Jesus' death and resurrection because it brought the world an opportunity to receive the Lord Jesus as Christ as our Savior and to be brought back into a right relationship. And we are now able to go before the Father uh, as, as renewed, reborn, because now we are covered by the blood. I, I wore this red today purposely. I put this red on today purposely because I want you to remember the blood of Jesus on Easter Sunday. When you get up and you celebrate, I want you to say, I remember Reverend Smith had on that bright red because I want you to know the blood that he shed for you and for me that we might have a right relationship. I want you to understand what it means when, when, when the, the trumpet call, which is which, uh, called the cock crow, and uh, the end of the third and the beginning of the fourth watch. I, I want you to understand what uh, Mahdi Thursday means. I want you to understand what Good Friday means. I want you to, to understand what uh, Resurrection Sunday means. I, I want you to understand paganism and, and, and that it, even if you um, celebrate and with your children with um, uh, eggs and uh, if you celebrate with your children with uh, Easter bunnies or those things, that you make sure that you explain to them what we are really celebrating. And that as they open that egg, that that egg opening is the, is the beginning of a, uh, of a new, new type of, of life. All right. Amen. That that egg also represents new birth because out of that chicken egg comes baby chicks. <laughs> Sometimes we don't think about it like that. Amen. 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 And so uh, as we move forward, don't let anybody get you confused 
or tell you that you should not be celebrating uh, Easter or Resurrection Sunday. Don't let anybody tell you that, um, that you can't celebrate it because the word Easter is not in the Bible. Well, the word Easter is not in the Bible. That's true. But the word March, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, those words are not in the Bible either. So if you're going to stop celebrating and, and, and following guidelines uh, based on what's in the Bible, <clears throat> then you're going to have to figure out how you go about these months. You're going to have to figure out how you go about these days because you won't find them um, as we use them in, 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 in our everyday life. But, but the essence of why we celebrate is scriptural. It's not pagan. Pagan came and imitated what was already in scripture. Amen. So I've shared enough about Easter. I shared enough about why we celebrate, shared enough about this pagan worship. And so I say to you, um, continue to be inspired to be all that God is calling you to be. Don't, don't be afraid of the dreams that God gives you. Dream big. Don't dream small. Dream big because the God that we serve, he is a big God. And if he puts that inside of you, yeah, it, 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 it might give you hesitation. But you keep on pushing forward because he's opening doors and he's making ways for you. So you continue to be inspired. And then in your inspiration, make sure you get some knowledge, some information on how to proceed and how to go forward and, and what are next steps. And then your inspiration with your uh, information brings transformation. God bless you. See you next week. God bless.